greetings and salutations. Ooh. How are you doing? Greetings and salutations from scenic New Jersey. <laughs> That's a thing? Why not? <laughs> You're officially in don't give a fuck mode. Why not? Sure. I live on a golf course. It's, you know, it's green. <laughs> you can see grass and grass. And occasionally white dudes in ugly pants. What is that about golf? Is, is that a requirement? Is that like, you know... I don't know. If you're going to do this thing, you have to wear these pants. It's, it's, and the chicks always have really obnoxious pink everything. And I like I like me some pink, but chicks who play golf are always like in pink, pink and green or like the chick golf colors officially. <laughs> that pink and green, that that's like Easter colors. No, that's like the preppy color. It yeah. is. That is like the official preppy color palette, like bright pink and like Kelly green. I'm learning things. I don't know. I don't know clothes. Here's how I pick my clothes. What's clean today? Okay. My my process is a little more involved than that, but. Does. Okay. I, I, I do. I will admit going a little further. Do these colors make my eyes hurt to look at together? No. That's what we're going with. I have a lot of black. Yeah, I have a lot of black just because I have to work for work. But I have a lot of black. I have a lot of black because I'm a simple fucking creature. I'm like, this will match this. There we go. Uh, Tara did not highlight her hair. Tara's hair is turning fucking white. Fun fact about redheads. We skip the gray stage and we go straight to white ass white hair. So what you see in here is not highlights. Those are the pieces of my hair that have gone fucking white. And the reason that my niece tells me I look like Anna from Frozen because I have red hair with white stripes. Yeah. Oddly enough, it looks it looks kind of badass. I got a little rogue stripe in my bangs in the front. Yeah. So it's 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 not highlights. It's I'm old. <laughs> or you've been doing this for far too long. Or that could be your fault. And and speaking of tonight, holy God, we just have a slow escalation. Do you want to do the nonsense? Yeah, because ev every story tonight, everyone is pain. It's some of them are just sort of like sometimes we get some that are just kind of interesting or just a little weird, like some weird product or something. But no, everything tonight hurts. Every fucking thing. Here we go. Well, fun. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call crazy. What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And you know, the very first story tonight, we're jumping straight. There is no other, no other question we can ask. Okay. Bears are bad news. <laughs> Especially when they play baseball. Leave the bears alone. You don't even know what you did. I know baby. what I did. I okay. know what I did. I know what I did. But just leave bears alone. I, th I We have taught you this. This is why you should watch the show. We teach you things. We have taught yeah. you. Don't fuck with bears why would you fuck with a bear now sometimes we see it some sort of like an accidental thing like people like will encounter a bear and like oh no or they'll be like feeding the bears or something don't feed bears either don't do that or we, we saw the drunk bear one time which was yes. kind of amazing Feed hemingway bear but this this is jesus christ man what the fuck is wrong with you man in bear costume harasses bears in Alaska. Do you know I saw something like this with hippos? A guy in a hippo costume harassing the hippos? Because they were trying to harvest, um, you know, hippos sweat red. Yeah. It looks like they sweat blood, but they secrete a natural sunscreen that is believed to have anti-aging properties. 
So they were trying to harvest the skin secretion to study it, but you can't exactly just go up to a hippo and scrape it because it'll fucking house you. So they built a very realistic life-size like hippo costume that a dude could get into with a hole out the side out of which he could stick a little like scraper on like a three foot pole and send him into a pot of hippos in this fucking costume. And you know, that's science there. That's, yeah. but listen to this. Authorities want to talk to a man who donned a fairly realistic bear costume, head and all, and wore it when harassing a bear and two sows trying to feed on pink salmon. Wasn't immediately known what the man was trying to accomplish. Crowd had gathered at a weir used to count fish because the sows and two cubs have frequently been showing up there to feed. The crowd, which is kept at a safe distance, became startled when a man decked out in a bear outfit ran through the area early Monday morning. The man began to jump up and down and then got close to the cubs within five to ten feet. Okay. If you get close to Mama Bear's cubs, that is death. Do you think maybe this was a furry that kind of lost his grip on reality? <laughs> well, no, because it says a realistic bear costume. <laughs> um, like, just drank a little too much at Anthrocon this year and never quite came back around. Uh, a fish and game technician, Lou uh, Senecola, tried to talk to the man. Uh, the man refused to identify himself. Uh, the man told the technician, you have the license plate number, you figure it out. What? What? Um, <laughs> this is the best line. Um, spokesman for the troopers, Megan Peters said, this is not the first time we've encountered a man in a bear suit. Oh, really? This is part of the job? <laughs> this just, this is like, is this part of... Another day in the, in the Alaska PD. Was is, this Alaska? Yeah. Is Anchorage, Alaska. Is this in like the training video? Now, oh. welcome Todd, to... Di Todd Palin just needs time away from Sarah. However, he can... <laughs> that household is fucking exhausting. You will go to extreme measures. Todd, what are you doing? Nothing. I'm fine. I'm a bear. No time here. Just a bear. Can you can you imagine the training video? Welcome to day three. In case a man in a bear shoot shows up, here's what you do. Uh, T.A. Scott Jr. Teddy bears picnic. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah, they don't actually have picnic baskets. No, they don't. Or wear jaunty hats. This is, this is just, this is taunting death. Yeah, because you're not going to fool the bears. No matter how realistic that fucking costume is, you're not going to fool the bears. Because you don't smell like bear. The bear's not suddenly going to go, oh, hello, bear. I didn't know you were here. Well, hello. Welcome to the neighborhood. You must be new. I haven't seen you before. I am a bear, too. Yeah, we have that in common. It's so cool that you're also a bear. They, there is that, that cliche about the mama bear. That's a cliche for a reason, because if yeah. you get near the little baby bears, mama bear will kill you. That's not a euphemism. That's not hyperbole. She will devour your entrails. Yeah, they will fuck you up. And sometimes bears are, bears are really, really efficient machines of death. Sometimes they don't kill you. They will wound you really bad and then bury you to come back and eat you later. Is that true? Yes. That is happened. Horrible. Why would they leave you alive? Because you stay fresh longer. Oh my god, is that really true? I'm not shitting you, you can look this shit up. They will maim you and bury your ass and come back and eat you later. Wow. Don't fuck with... I'm gonna put on a bear suit, it'll be fun.
Yeah, no, don't do that. That's not going to work out. You tremendous imbecile! Speaking of tremendous imbeciles, and yet again in our series of repeating this shit keeps happening, um, we had the incident where the guy ran up on stage to charge his phone. Remember that? Yeah. And we've had, we keep having people come up. This is our first story ever from Playbill.com. Oh, I'm, we're, we're getting classy up in this piece. I know, this is our first story from Playbill.com. Although, however, their headlines kind of make me a bit sad. Well, they're theater people, man. Oh, no, she did. <laughs> is <laughs> the headline. They're theater, theater people. Audience member seeks relief backstage in midst of a performance. What kind of relief? Actress Christine Sherrill was waiting backstage to make her entrance in Signature Theater's production of The Fix when the doors through which she was supposed to make her entrance suddenly burst open the wrong way. A woman stood there, delivered a dramatic request, where is the bathroom I have to pee? The audience member climbed onto the stage of the Arlington, Virginia Theater and exited through a door on the set seeking a restroom. Occurred right in the middle of Tina McCoy and Cal Chandler's onstage duet, Alleluia, Luia? I can't permit it pronounce just before Cheryl's entrance. Alleluia. Alleluia. Is that it? Okay. I'm dumb. So there appears to have been no question about what part of the theater building was intended for actors and which part for the audience. Yeah, you want to know where the bathroom is? The fucking lobby. Gardner said the unnamed woman described as being in her mid-30s and part of a group was escorted to the lobby restroom by a member of the crew and appears to have completed her mission. She, quote, she appears to have been intoxicated when she was walked out to the lobby. Who goes to the theater to get tore up? Me at six years old. <laughs> I have to have told you that story. Yes, you have, but... When I was six years old, my sister and I got drunk on leftover wine in the fridge, I think champagne in the fridge, and my mom had tickets to take us to see Annie on Broadway, Sarah Jessica Parker as Annie. And we were fucking turnt. And mom was like, I don't care. I paid for these tickets. We're going. <laughs> Six-year-old me and nine-year-old my sister. So, what, this... And yet we still did not jump on the stage. We still knew better at six and nine and fucking turnt. You know, those the, the set is not real. It's not a real place. There's not a real bathroom on the... That's not how that works. That's not how that works. Okay, no. Newtons. I mean, at least there wasn't a bathroom set on stage and she didn't like pop a squat on the fake toilet on stage or something. Newton says the audience must have been pissed. <laughs> this show's a piece of shit, man. Oh, hi. <clears throat> oh. You thought we're over here. You thought Kitty might want to. She's like, no, I don't want to be on the internet. Fuck you. No. No, he hates them. Hi. How are you? The fuck did you wake me up for? What's going on? You're just gonna you're just gonna stare over at Dan. You could look at the camera and say hello. hello. No, she, she. I love how she deliberately positions herself to look anywhere but the camera. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> she just gives everybody the butt. Nope. Fuck you. Fuck. Not gonna do it. No, it. It's. I'm not your dancing monkey. There are places where it's acceptable to be drinking, like a ball game. That kind of comes with the territory. Or. Or a bar, you know. But theaters are not where you go to get sloshed. I mean, they do serve at the theater. Yes, but if you you should like maybe have a drink, a yeah. beer, yeah, a glass of wine. Oh, ow, ow, okay, all right. Sit on your old perch. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and she fucked off. I got little holes in my shoulder now. Yeah, she's gonna fuck off now. <laughs> 
Just put her tail like, right there. In the shot. That's attractive. She's doing that thing with her tail that cats do when they're irritated. Yeah. The grumpy... And she fucked off. <laughs> Did you hear that nice thump? And then promptly knocked herself on her ass, scratching her own ear. It's a picture of Grace, our baby. Yeah, just don't... Don't go to a theater and get fucked up. No. Don't do it. It's not... It's not interactive. Just because it's live does not mean it's interactive. Oh, boy. And our next one... Keep in mind, we are escalating. It's just getting worse and worse, kids. I promise you. I have no I, no problem with the whole concept of service dogs. I've known quite a few people who need service dogs you know, yeah. through my life. I've met them. And, you know, it's fine. But keep in mind, the Americans with Disability Act states only dogs are recognized as service animals. That's it. That's all that's legally recognized is dogs. Oh, this 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 should be good. <sighs> hey, you gotta admit, they, they worked on this headline. Snake brought into restaurant rattles nerves. <laughs> Snake wasn't on the menu of a Missouri restaurant, but that's what patrons got, along with a side of rattled nerves. Who wrote oh, this? It's Dan Country. Andreas Proust wrote this. You should be ashamed. Why would you do that? A reptile thought to be a boa constrictor was brought into an eatery in Nixon, Missouri. Which this doesn't week. even rattle, by the way. No, it doesn't. It just because it's a snake, it's a different thing. Stop it. Sending some fleeing. Lisa Lofelholtz told CNN affiliate KYTZ she spotted a man and woman holding the snake and, quote, it started to slither down into the booth behind her. Yeah, that's. Lofelholt said she notified the restaurant manager who said the couple insisted the snake was a service animal and the restaurant should allow it to stay. Uh-huh. He said, it's my service animal and I'm allowed to have it because it helps me with my depression. No. While that's very sweet. Yeah. Here's the thing. Snakes secrete from their skin basically salmonella mm -hmm. if you handle a snake you should immediately wash your hands yeah. like i i had a friend in college who had a little small constrictor that i loved who was very sweet and he would just hand her to me for the day and i she'd curl up on my hair clip and we had a great old time but he always reminded me as soon as you get back to me wash your hands because snakes carry salmonella not a good thing to bring into an eatery no I have nothing against snakes. They can be uh, charming, quiet, yeah. little, sweet little creatures. However, not everyone is cool with snakes. People try to pull this shit so much. When I worked at Sephora, we had a lady that had a little fucking chihuahua that she claimed was a service dog so that she could walk it around the Sephora and not get kicked out. And this thing would bark its full head off. That's not what service dogs do. Right. But we weren't allowed to kick her out because she claimed it was a service animal. It was like the get out of jail free card. Unfortunately, like I said, the law says only dogs are recognized. So maybe she was, maybe she had some legal way with the Chihuahua, not with a snake. No. And they carry a foodborne illness on their skin. So you really should not have that in a fucking restaurant. That's not okay. Snakes are it just, it, not everyone is cool with snakes, man. Yeah, they really freak some people out. Like, like, what is it with people who, like, they get their thing? Not like that. Um, They have, they have, a, like, all right, if my example. If kind of snake snithering around the booth. I, I use my, my e -sig, But when people say, could you not do that? I'm like, okay. And it's done. Because I understand I live in a world with other people. Yeah. Speaking of which, did you watch True Detective this season? No. They did several, Rachel McAdams' character was smoking an e-cig for most of it, and every other main character gave her shit about her e-cig. Like, every other main character ragged on her e-cig, and I, I thought of you. Clearly, Nick Pizzeria, whatever his name is, does not like the e-cig. 
Well, that and it's an awful, awful show. Have the season was was not as good. But yeah, you know, I've got I when people say, can you rather not do that? I'm like, OK, and then I don't do it because, you know, it, there are two responses that people take. The first is I have a right to do this. I can, the law says I can do this, so I'm gonna do it. That's the first response. And the other is, oh, I'm sorry. I am polite. I I'm exist. A, I'm a grown up person. I exist in a society with other human beings. Yeah. And out of, you know, just respect and just common courtesy to you, I shall stop doing the thing. Like having our giant snake slither into your booth. And, and that's the thing. Like, even if you have a service dog, your right to do something only goes as far as everyone else's right not to be fucking molested by what you're doing. So, like, the second your, serv your service dog, which shouldn't do that anyway, but your service dog is bothering other people and, like, crawling around under their table... That's that's no longer OK. I hate it. Service snake is slithering into somebody else's booth. You know, maybe your service snake just senses that they have depression as well and wants to give them a really nice tight boa constrictor hug, but they don't want one. I hate it when people's kids do that shit. I can't even imagine if someone's snake does that shit. One of my coworkers the other day was like, you think if I yell at this person's kids, it'd go viral? <laughs> I was like, maybe. He's like, go get your phone. Let's do that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah, just the, what the f huh. Yeah. Okay. Not, okay. Like maybe that snake really does help you. And if so, that's wonderful. I'm happy for you. But. Yeah, but no. that doesn't like you can probably get through lunch without mm -hmm. your snake friend. OK, the next one. I also have depression. I get it. But you can probably get through lunch without your security blanket. The next one. As always, we have a disclaimer here on Radio Dead Air. Don't eat while you watch this show. Oh, good. If you're eating right now or even drinking, you want to stop. You want to stop immediately. Pause, have lunch, let it settle, then come on back. Okay? Now, you know, I was looking for more variations on this shoving shit in your pants and leaving the store shoplifting thing. But, you were looking for more? Well, I've been, we, we, on the show, we do this. But this guy took it to a whole new level. Wow. And I hey. Like whenever you say don't eat while we read this, like a third of the chat tells us exactly what they are going to continue to eat. Contrary little bitches. <sighs> That's their own fault. This comes to us from glorious South Carolina. Spartanburg, South Carolina, which is very much better ding 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 country. I've been there, I know. Shoplifter hides steaks in colostomy bag. Oh no. Now, ladies and gentlemen, some of you may be asking, well, Nash, what is a colostomy bag? Well, that's what happens. Time for some learning. That's what happens when certain parts of your insides in regards to digestion and excretion, no longer work quite right. So they insert a little tube in you, and all that nasty, horrible shit literally goes into this bag, which That's is like called... strapped to your hip. Yep, it's your colostomy bag. South Carolina man arrested yesterday after shoplifting ribeye steaks from a food lion smuggled meat out of the store in his colostomy bag. Cops were called Tuesday to the food lion after employees reported that, quote, an older white male stole $75 worth of ribeye steaks. The workers say the man drove away from the Roebuck store in a green Nissan, the license plate for which they copied down. 
County Sheriff's deputies trace the car back to David Samuel Hoyt, 55, who looks just very confused in this. He looks just what? Um, who they found at his residence. During questioning, Hoyt initially denied stealing the steaks, but later made a verbal confession to the theft, saying he put the meat in bags and walked out of the food lion. Th this is a great line from the story. Thankfully, additional details about means of conveyance were not mem memorialized by investigators. I didn't think colostomy bags were that big. I... Like 70 just... something dollars worth of steak? I didn't think colostomy bags were that big. <laughs> apparently, he apparently had several of them. Now, what was he going to do if they caught him? Apparently, he was a geriatric superhero drawn by Rob Liefeld and just had a series of colostomy pouches. <laughs> <laughs> And tragically, no feet. <laughs> can, can you imagine if they stop him and like, sir, what's that? It's a colostomy bag. Sir, you appear to have an entire steak in there. My digestion's not so good. Yeah. That's why I got the colostomy bag. That's why I got the bag. Hard to digest stuff. So, no. so you ate a raw, whole raw steak. It's not even chewed. My digestion's bad. What they don't mention is, was this an empty colostomy bag that he happened to own? Or was he you'd using like it? Think, you'd you'd like, like to think. He planning on eating those steaks. But then again, a few weeks ago, we did a story about a dude who made a homemade Hot Pocket out of his own shit and ate that. So who knows anymore? Who knows? The world's gone wrong. Yeah, the police report does not reveal the whereabouts or ultimate disposition of the stolen stakes. I don't think disposition is the right word there. Because that makes me think they're wondering about the, the mood of the stakes. <laughs> I am a very unhappy ribeye. I didn't like, I didn't like the bag. I have I, had a really shitty day. Oh, really? Really? If that fruit got I mean, someone any- Someone did point out, they've scrolled now, but like you usually do carry an extra so you can change it. So one would like to hope what? that he put it in the clean new bag. But yes, my shirt is covered in shoes. <laughs> one would hope he put it in the clean unused bag. You would, but, but this we've show- been this, We've been doing this show long enough that just, who knows? We don't oh God. know. What? Brown eye steaks. Oh. Uh, no, not okay. Not okay. You go sit in the corner and think about what you've done. You go time out. But it just keeps getting worse this week. There's worse than colostomy steaks? Oh, God, yes, there's worse. So overseas, we've been having concerns and worries about terrorist attacks on uh, tourists in other countries, Muslim nations, nations in the Middle East area. It's something America and England and all the countries are taking very seriously, and tourists who go there are informed, look, be fucking careful. They give you, like, pamphlets, and they tell you this shit, and there's, like, State Department briefs that they, they put out. Well... Some of the well, hotel in Turkey decided, hey, you know what'll be fun? Let's fuck with them. Brit tourists run for their lives as Turkish hotel sta staff stage sick Tunisia style terror prank. What? Terrified British tourists ran for their lives after hotel staff in Turkey posed as so called Islamic State terrorists. In a tasteless poolside prank, workers reported to have donned traditional Arab clothing while carrying fake machine guns stunned holiday makers in Turkey just six weeks after 38 people were gunned down in Tunisia. One horrified Briton even revealed how he had a liquid from a bottle marked fuel poured on him by a mock terrorist 
who then pulled a lighter. This was not just some random people who came into the hotel. These people worked for the hotel. So I'm assuming this is like a major league situation where they are doing their best to bankrupt the hotel so that they can short sell it and make a fortune. Even better. This is a five star hotel. See so get the name here. See, the last time I had I, I heard about anybody getting an automatic weapon pulled at them in a five star hotel was when our gaming club had a convention at the same hotel where the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia was staying. Yeah. <laughs> and he had guards armed with Uzis outside the doors yeah. of his suite. The, the five star Grand Yassizi Resort, um, less than 400 miles from the Syrian border where ISIS holds large swaths of territory. So. Whose idea was this? And precisely how fired are they? I don't even know. Like, who? what happened in the staff meeting that day where this became an idea? Like, so we really want to, you know, get some excitement going on here. You know, we want to bring some zing to everybody's vacations. You know what we should do? Just, just thinking outside the box here, Steve. We should stage a fake terrorist attack. Yes! Jet to Holidays Tours apologized for any distress and insisted the hotel's entertainment team would never use the costumes again. A spokesman for the tour operator said, quote, The hotel management have assured us it was never their intention to cause any offense or upset with their entertainment program. That's not entertainment. And how would that not cause... Oh my god. Someone could have gotten killed because, okay, you are a tourist in another country. You are slightly concerned about terrorism. Suddenly terrorists appear. Your family's with you. You may wish to protect them by any means necessary. Or, you know, some nice little old British grandma has a fucking a heart attack. Yes. This is, this is not entertainment. No. I, what the fucking... Guys, this is gonna be great, okay? So today, we're gonna dress up like we're terrorists and shit, and we're gonna go scare everybody, and they're gonna love it. The tips are gonna be amazing. You watch. You the watch. The tips are not going to be amazing. <laughs> fucking hell. The tips are not gonna be good today, fellas. Or tomorrow. The, I, I, so all of a sudden... Go ahead and sign up for that unemployment. Somewhere at Google headquarters, one of the, the people in the programming department looked up and went, Hey, why are we keep getting searches about how to sue a hotel in Turkey? <laughs> it's like blowing up. I don't understand. What the fuck is going on? Dude, don't say blowing up. <laughs> Like, you shouldn't get PTSD from your vacation. No. That's the opposite of a vacation. You're supposed to go to unwind, not face your own mortality. Although maybe it's like, remember that movie The Game? With Michael Douglas? Where no. it was a really fucking elaborate LARP that he didn't realize was a really elaborate LARP and they burned his life down to make him realize what was really important? I haven't seen that. Maybe it's like an immersion thing. Like, you know, like this is supposed to make you realign your priorities and shit. Yeah, my priorities at the moment are I need a lawyer. That's my top priority. Five star, a five star hotel pulled this shit. Well, our last one tonight is amazing. Number one, the guy is going to be okay. That's number one. We've see, all seen in the movies all of the the, uh, the car chases that go all crazy. And, and have you ever seen in a movie where someone will jump a car off a building and then keep driving? Yes. I remember in Terminator 2, there's that scene where the semi-truck takes a bridge embankment. 
yes. knocks out that fucking concrete, hits the it's it's suddenly it's in that gully ditch in LA, wherever the fuck it is, and keeps fucking driving. Or a Transporter <clears throat> 2, he did something like that, didn't he? Like he jumped from one thing into a parking garage and then like drifted into a perfect parallel park. Yeah. Well, you know what? That that is that is not. That's not really how cars work. That's not how that shit works. Man drives off roof of downtown Eli Lilly building, Indianapolis. A man drove his car off the roof of one of the buildings in the Eli Lilly World Headquarters complex downtown. Emergency crews had to cut him out of the vehicle after it landed upside down. Yeah, see, there's this this thing about how things don't just fall in one direction. They no, kinda... it's tumble. Yeah, because physics and stuff. Police said the man was headed westbound on McCarty Street when he drove through a closed gate and onto a grassy area. What the driver didn't know was the grass was actually on the roof of another building and would drop off onto the ground below. This is what happens when you listen to your GPS. <laughs> Only if you have Apple Maps. Only if you have Apple Maps. If you have Google Maps, you're fine. If you have Apple Maps, this will happen to you. I'm this. Th I am. They, they want to kill us. They seriously want to rise the fuck up and kill us. My Google Maps has never steered me wrong because I'm nice to her. <laughs> Dan is a dick to his GPS. <laughs> his GPS gets us lost all the time because he yells at it and he's a dick to it. I am very nice. I say thank you whenever Google Maps gets me wrong. <laughs> and I've never been steered wrong. You know what's going to scare the shit out of you is when it says you're welcome. Well, yeah, then I'm never leaving the house again. I've noticed but if you're nice to your technology, your technology will be nice to you. I've noticed that when I don't follow the directions on I'm the, the evil eye from the couch right now. I've noticed that when I don't follow the directions from Google Maps, it seems strangely it might just be my imagination, but it seems to slowly get more strident with each <laughs> recalculation. I used to love the Garmin because you could almost hear her getting exasperated with you. Recal Recalculating. <laughs> Recalculating, you stupid <laughs> meatbag. Yeah. But Jesus Christ. Okay. Closed gates are closed for a reason. Generally, yeah, yeah. And that doesn't work like it does in movies either. No. Where you just drive up to the gate and it busts open. Like Boom! No. Good portion of time, you're going to either crash or bounce right the fuck off. Either way, you're going to have a hell of a neck wound or neck injury. Those, and your car is going to be shit. Yeah, those the movies make it look like that shit's made out of balsa wood. It ain't. No. It's metal and it don't like to break. But he managed to get through it and the driver was taken to... Uh, Eskenazi health and is expected to be okay. You lucky son of a bitch. You lucky fuck. Can you, now, imagine you're on the road and you look up and you see suddenly Yeah. That's one of those points in life you have to sit and go, did I just go crazy? <laughs> Is today the day? Did I did, snap? Did I, like, finally, finally, do I need to get a really realistic bear costume and go to Alaska? <laughs> Is today that day? Is it time yet? Has it happened? Yeah, that 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 is our first. Well, yeah, that the, the, number one. The first thing. What do we learn tonight? The first thing we've learned is the GPS is not always correct. Yeah, be nice to your GPS and pay attention. It's like trusting God, but lock your car. Like you have to be a little. You have to participate in the process and be a little bit vigilant because that GPS might be wrong. Might be. We've learned. And harassing bears in a bear costume. What the fuck is even? Just leave the nature alone, man. Don't just fuck leave with the nature the alone. Leave the bears alone. 
They don't want you. They don't need you. They don't want any part of our shit. They're much smarter than we are in that way. We've learned that if you are at the movie or at any theater event, don't get that drunk. Don't get so drunk that you're up on stage looking it's for the bathroom. It's going to where they're going to have to put up, like, netting <laughs> in front of the stage at theaters now. At, like, live theater productions, there's going to have to be, like, a fucking barrier. To like keep... In, in hockey games. <laughs> Can you imagine that? The entire actor's under glass. Just to keep the fucking audience from fucking wandering up on stage and doing whatever yeah. the fuck they want. Uh, we've learned... That uh, just because you want to do a thing doesn't mean you're necessarily legally allowed to do a thing. And and just because you're legally allowed to do a thing doesn't mean you fucking should. Yes. Just a little common fucking courtesy. Please. Like, there's a lot of ways that you're allowed to be a total asshole. That doesn't mean you should. That doesn't mean doing that thing doesn't make you a total asshole. We've learned probably shouldn't shoplift and you definitely shouldn't shoplift via colostomy bags. No. That's that doesn't lock in the flavor you want. Just bring a fanny pack. You could stack a couple of ribeyes in a fanny pack, like probably three deep and have a nice dinner. Poop free. You've thought about this. I hadn't, actually, until just now, but it's about the right size and shape. <sighs> and finally, we learned this week, do not fake terrorist attacks. No, don't do real ones either. Let's just be clear. Oh, so I should do it for real then? No. Okie dokie. No. You should do no kind of terrorist attack. Not real, not fake. It's, no. It's not. No one laughs. No one's going to think, oh, you got me. Yeah, you got me. Terrorism is hilarious. I as thought, far as I'm aware. I thought you were here to cut off my head, but you're not. I'm dying. No, I'm not. <laughs> you got me. No. No. Nobody thinks that's funny. It's not fucking funny. Yeah, there's, it's, it's always like that one guy who takes the joke way too fucking far. There's always one guy in every group. I mean, that's an extreme, extreme case of that phenomenon. You but, know, it's like, it's like yeah. when your friend passes out drunk and they're like, hey, draw a dick on him. And then the next one jumps up to, hey, maybe shave his leg. And then it's like, stuff things in his butt. <laughs> no, Dave. No, Dave, no! No, no! Too far! Too fucking far! Is that too far? That's too far! I gotta make some phone calls when we're off the air then. 